Well, 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 so we meet again, my friends. You thought I forgot about this video. I mean, makes sense. It was maybe almost about a year ago when I said, hey, I would make a part three regarding the Beatles White Album and I would rank them and say which ones I enjoyed the most. And then a long period of time went and I didn't do it. <laughs> So I'm back. I'm going to rank every song in that album and place them in tier categories based on how likely I am to listen to the song or skip the song in the album. We have S for Splendiferous. I'm never skipping that damn song. A. I might skip it, but 90% of the time I'll listen to it. And so on and so forth. Let's get to it with the first song. So first up we have Back in the USSR and I'm gonna start this video off poorly because I give this song a rating of C. So it's a good rock song, upbeat, it gives nice Beach Boy vibes at least to me in the harmonies and if you want to see me pull out one of these dance moves doo -doo 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 -doo, then put on Back in the USSR. However if I want an upbeat rock song this is not the one I'm gonna go to. Please don't hate me, let's get to the next one. Which is Dear Prudence. So a little fun fact, according to the internet, this song is about Mia Farrow's sister, Prudence, who got really into meditating, and this song's around that story, apparently. I like how most of the song, it's rather quite chill, it picks up towards the end. However, the melody up until that point doesn't really hold me for such a super long time in order to listen to it every gosh damn time. So I'm gonna give this one a B. So with that said, let's keep going to Glass Onion. That was a bad imitation, I'm sorry, I'll stop. So I do like this song for the lyrics, the referencing of previous songs and previous works. I really like the instrumental section that sounds very like James Bond, the ascending half step that has the suspense. I will give it a B. It is higher than uh, back in the USSR for me, so I give this one a B. The next song we have is Oh Bloody, Oh Blood Ah, and this one, hands down, is a damn A. Freaking fantastic. If you want to see me dance poorly, you put this one on. You see me walking into a restaurant, you put this one on because I'll pull out a little shimmy. Clearly that's the only dance move I have in my arsenal. <laughs> Lyrically, so easy to sing along with, especially if it's the first time you've heard it. It makes me feel like I'm in a pub singing with a large group of friends, which usually doesn't happen with me because I don't have a large group of friends. So the fact that the song emits that feeling out of me, I very much enjoy and I want to experience that feeling. I'm going to put oh bloody oh blada, life goes on. <laughs> Hands down, banger of a song, A. The next one, Wild Honey Pie. I don't want to listen to Wild Honey Pie again. I'm so sorry. I don't like Wild Honey Pie. It's not for me. It's okay if it's for you. We can accept our differences and live on happily in the world. And in continuing that journey, we have the continuing story of Bungalow Bill. This song feels like it's trying to do something similar with Oh Bloody, Oh Blada in terms of creating that atmosphere that you're out with a group of friends. I do however like the contrast between verse and chorus, however I'm not going to listen to this one that consistently but it's still a good one that I do listen to sometimes so I'm giving it a B. Okay, and now, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. This song is what the S tier category was created for. It is splendid, splendiferous, super duper. It is all those things and I don't think I ever skip it. Every time it comes on I'm like, I want to experience all the beauty of While My Guitar Gently Weeps. I love it. It's in the A minor key. It alternates from the A minor to the Dorian mode in the verse altering that D minor chord to a D major chord, which gives it a little bit of lift. So I got my little keyboard to demonstrate. Can you see the dust flying around? I haven't played it in a while. So instead of it sounding like this, while my guitar gently weeps, that's keeping the D minor, but when it shifts the Dorian, it gives us D major, which gives us that, while my guitar gently weeps. It like, it gives that little elevated mood, which is also why when we go to I don't know why, it has that oomph, oomph de lift because it switches to the A major. I'm gonna stop yapping on, but this song is just like, ah, it's splendid. Next up, we have Happiness is a Warm Gun. Happiness is a warm gun. 
I feel like people are not gonna like my ranking with this one because I'm aware. I feel like it's quite a popular one within the fan base. I really do quite enjoy the comical backing vocals of them singing bang, bang, shoot, shoot. However, I'm gonna give this one a ranking of a B because it's not one I listen to all that often. I will listen to it sometimes, but it's not one where I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna listen to this one. Okay, Martha, my dear. Martha, my dear, though I spend my days in conversation. First time I heard it, I'm pretty sure I was like, what? I thought he was singing about a girl. I now have been educated, thank you very much, and I know that he's singing about a dog. Martha, my dear, I'm giving it an A. I know, this may be shocking, but if I want to be transported to the good old ye days and I want to be bopping along, it's all, oh, it's like a, it's a vibe. I like how it makes me feel, and therefore I'm going to listen to it more often than not. That's why it gets an A. I am so tired. Oh. So Again, remember, I'm not ranking the quality of a song. I'm just saying how often I would listen to it. I am so tired. I'm going to give a C. I think it's very relatable in terms of feeling that tiredness. However, I just find it's one that I just don't get into all that much and I do tend to skip. I'm sorry for those who really love it, um, but I would give it a C. Blackbird. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. You know it, you love it, it's S, S tier, it's superior, it's, I can't think of any other word to start with S that's superior and splendid, but it's damn good, that's why it gets an S. What is there not to love about it? It's the ability to create these simple sounding songs that you feel like you have heard them before despite you have never he having heard them before. The melodies are so instantly memorable and familiar and they create this sense of, oh, I know where this song is going and it's like comfortable. It's just one of those songs I feel like you could probably analyze and analyze, but there's still an element of magic. I like to think that art and music have elements of magic to them that can't always be explained. And I feel like Blackbird really exemplifies what made the Beatles great in terms of their songwriting when they wrote simple songs and Blackbird to me is perfect and I love Love it. Piggies! Piggies. Have you seen the little piggies crawling in the dirt? Starts off with medieval vibes, catches my attention, but after a little while I just feel like the big bad wolf and I don't really want to see where the piggies stories go and I realize that metaphor makes no sense and I had thought about it prior to this and now that's really sad. Metaphors clearly are not my forte. I'm giving this one a C. Uh, it doesn't really do anything for me emotionally, uh, so I just kind of skip this one most of the time. Okay, Rocky Raccoon. Rocky Raccoon checked into his room. This one's gonna sneak up on you, okay? What do you think I'm gonna give Rocky Raccoon? Um, this may be controversial and it may be confusing and I understand, but I'm giving a Rocky Raccoon an S. Because the melody of Rocky Raccoon is stunning. Rocky Raccoon is a melodically beautiful song. And I think initially because of the start where it's kind of talking in that accent, I can't do accents very well, but when it's spoken in that accent, you're kind of like not expecting such a beautiful melody. I think it's so pretty. It's simple, but it's beautiful. And I want to listen to that melody. So S, I'm not skipping this song. Okay, don't pass me by. I'm going to give it a B. I enjoy the rhythm, but after like maybe 20 seconds, I'm like, okay, um, and then I skip. Maybe that should be a C then. Oh, I may, I'm changing it. I'm giving it a C because I probably, yeah, I probably skip it more often than I listen to it. I'm giving Don't Pass Me By a C. Okay, next one. Why don't we do it in the road? The most beautiful thing every woman wants to be asked. I'm just, I've just been waiting to be asked. I think we can count down again and guess what I'm gonna give this one. Three, two, one, F. <laughs> um, I just, it doesn't give me the emotional journey that I'm after, you know, it's um, it's just a little bit, um, <laughs> yeah, it's not for me. It's not for me, okay? <laughs> okay, I will. I will not skip this song, so I'm giving it an S. Again, similar to Blackbird in terms of shining the simplicity of their songwriting, I Will sounds like a melody that you've known before. It's just one of those very simple melodies. It's just very easy to predict where the song's going. It also gives me very similar feelings to Michelle in terms of, I feel like I'm in Europe 
when I'm listening to I Will. I know that sounds like a very odd thing to say, but I feel like I'm in holiday in Europe and I'm fancy and I'm, you know, and um, I don't often get to go to Europe and travel. So if I can get that feeling from a song, I want that. And I'm pretty sure I read an article where Paul McCartney was saying this is one of his favorite songs he's written in terms of melody that he was like really proud of it. And I can see why, because it's just enjoyable. That's what you want from a song. You want it to be enjoyable to listen to. The next one, Julia. When I first reacted, I did not know that this was supposedly about John Lennon's mother. I now know that, which makes me feel a little bit bad that I'm going to give it the rating that I'm going to give it. I think overall it has a really nice atmosphere in terms of the sound with hints of darkness, like there's a dark undertone to this song. Apparently John Lennon learned the finger picking style called Travis picking, which he then implemented for this song. And I point that out mainly because I think it's really amazing to someone so successful to continue learning and to be open with that learning. I can imagine it would be very easy to be at such a successful level and believe you know it all and believe that you don't have to keep learning because what you know is good enough. And I just think that's a really cool thing to point out to encourage people to learn because sometimes when you get a bit older and as an adult, you feel a bit dorky starting to learn something new. And I just think that's a really cool thing. So I just wanted to point that out. I give this one a B because sometimes I'll listen to it, but it is very dependent on my mood. Birthday, I give it a C. I wasn't the biggest fan when I first listened to it from memory and it doesn't do that much to me. It feels like it performs the similar role as back in the USSR. It's an upbeat, rocky song that tries to get you back into it, but the melody just doesn't really catch me and I just find a little bit uh, by it. So yeah, I give this one a C. So Mother Nature's song It has one of those melodies that is very easy listening and very enjoyable and then towards the end when it gets like a bit more picked up and a bit of a rhythm it's I just, I'm trying to think of the word to describe how it makes me feel it's hopeful I would give it a B but like a high ranking B like it's almost an A everybody's got something to hide except me and my monkey It's a D. It's not quite an F, but it's a D. It feels like a lot of sounds that I don't enjoy listening to at once. So I will skip it more often than not. Ah, uh, let's get to the next one, which is Sexy Sadie. Sexy Sadie. I'm going to give a C. It feels like a lot of the sounds, I don't know if I've mentioned this in my reaction, but a lot of the sounds sit in the similar frequency. And I find when there is less of a balance in the frequencies, I enjoy listening to it less. And I think that's honestly the main reason, so I'll give it a C. Oh, Helter Skelter! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna put this down to I'm not a super hardcore rocker. And Helter Skelter is one that I will skip more often than not and therefore I'm giving it a D. I know lots of people like it, I'm sorry, you can like it and I will not. You can enjoy the songs I don't like and you can disagree with me, that's fine, we can all have different opinions, as long as we're kind to each other. Makes the world go round, apparently. Not that money stuff. Money does nothing. Yeah, who needs money? <laughs> Please like and subscribe. Long, long, long. I'm giving it a B. I find I don't listen to it all the time, but when I do, it's calming. I feel very at peace and I feel very grounded and I feel very calm. And I actually feel like if you were feeling anxious that this song would be perfect because it just feels like it lets you breathe. And I really do like that aspect of the song. So I, I'm giving it a B. Oh, Revolution 1, A. <laughs> It sounds fresh and modern, but also like it's old school at the same time to me. I really enjoy this one. It's just fun. I'm giving it an A. Honey Pie. Honey Pie, you are making me crazy. I really like how the Beatles have particular songs that sound like they're from a different time and they're old school and Honey Pie is one of those songs. It puts me in a happy mood. It's joyful. I give it a B because I feel like if I want this feeling, I might possibly listen to like Martha My Dear gets into it a little bit quicker perhaps. So this is like a B but like 
very close to the A. Like it's very close to being an A. It's happy, upbeat, I enjoy that B. Okay, next we have Savoy Truffle. I'm gonna give it a D. The reason for that is I just don't like listening to it all that much. So I'm giving it a D. I got no disrespect to the Beatles. I, we all have different preferences and that's okay, I believe. I'm giving it a D. Cry baby, cry. I'm giving it a B. Really easy listening. I really like that little odd section at the end. It's a good song, I just, it's not sitting on the level of the A's, you know? Revelation 9. Are you ready? Shall we count down again? 3, 2, 1, F. I have not, cannot, and will not listen to the entirety of Revelation 9 again. I did it for the reaction, I'm glad I did it but I've experienced what there was to experience and now I'm leaving it in the past and I'm moving on. Um, it's a soundscape. I admire the creativity and like the uniqueness of doing something like that as a big artist. However, I just don't listen to it. So yeah, an F. Okay, good night. Mm -hmm. This one really surprised me. I feel like so many Ringo songs surprise me. They have this like sweet innocence to almost most of his songs that I've heard at least through the Beatles and I really like that kind of feeling that it gives me. I feel like this song in particular transports me. It makes me feel like I'm in a Disney movie where everything is beautiful and safe and lovely and I love the orchestration. I love how it makes me feel like I'm back in the 50s and I mean like you know in terms of music not in terms of everything else and I'm gonna give this one an A. And I think if I had to choose my favorite song from the entire album it's got to be while well, my guitar gently weeps I'm pretty sure in my reaction I was very blown away and I still am by that song there's something about it that is just so well done and with that being said thank you so much for spending your time here today I'm Caroline and um, you can like and subscribe if you would like to but you don't have to and I'm gonna go and you're gonna go and you're gonna have a good day and we're all gonna have a good day <laughs>